All right, so we are looking at the second part of 4.7 today. So we're focusing on this idea of composing trig functions with inverse trig functions. Okay, so I want you to take a minute at your tables and discuss where were the inverse functions defined. We had different quadrants for inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. Just refresh your memory quick. What were the defined quadrants for those? All right, so what was the defined region for inverse sine? Quadrants one and four. So from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. All right, for inverse cosine, top half of our circle. So quadrants one and two from zero to pi. And inverse tangent. Wonderful. One and four again, but it doesn't include the pi over two and the negative pi over two. Right? We get really close, but can't quite be there. Okay, so what we're going to look at today is what do we do when we compose a trig function with an inverse trig function? Okay, and there's two situations. The first one, it says we're taking the sine of the inverse sine, or we're taking the cosine of the inverse cosine, or we're taking the tangent of the inverse tangent. Yesterday, what did we say those two things would do? They'd cancel each other out. However, in order to get an answer out of this, it has to be defined. So next to this one, I want you to write inverse function inside. Okay, so of the two functions, the inverse one is inside the parentheses. Okay, the regular trig function is outside. Inverse sine means we are taking, we're, we're plugging in a ratio and we're trying to get an angle out, okay? So this x here is a ratio and what we get out is an angle, all right? And then we're going to take the sine of that angle. So these two things will cancel as long as your ratio is between negative 1 and 1 because that's where we had our sine and cosine bouncing in our graph, remember that, from negative 1 to 1, okay? When we take the inverse function, our x's and y's flip-flop, and now negative 1 to 1 is my domain instead of my range. So I need my x value to be between negative 1 and 1. If it is, then the sine will cancel the inverse sine, and I just get x as an answer, okay? That is the same case for cosine. Tangent, though, remember our, our inverse tangent curve? It was that sideways twist-looking thing, okay? Our domain was all real numbers for that. So this one we can always do because you can always take the inverse tangent. Your, your x value here is always going to be between negative pi and pi. Sorry, between negative infinity and infinity, okay? If you are outside of those domains, if you are outside of negative 1 to 1 for sine and cosine, then it's a situation where it's game over. We're done. You say it does not exist. Can't do anything about it. Okay. The second scenario is where your inverse function here is on the outside. In that situation, you are always going to be able to give me an answer. You might have to do some adjusting, all right, similar to what we did yesterday. For example, we are taking the sine of an angle, okay? We take the sine of an angle, and then we want to take the inverse sine of that answer. Again, they will cancel out as long as your angle's between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. But if you're in one of the other quadrants, you can adjust it. Remember yesterday how we had to adjust it to one of the quadrants where we were defined? So this is a situation where if it's not landing in the right quadrants, it's not game over, it's game on. You have to do some adjusting and get it to be where you need it to be.
okay? So we're going to be using a lot of reference angles. You need to know your unit circle. If you're struggling with that, you might want to pull that sheet out, but know that you need to be learning those. Okay. All right, let's try a few. A lot of them. We're going to start out with the ones that was the game over situation, and that was where, which one was in the inside? Inverse, okay? If inverse is inside, you can do it or you can't. There's no adjusting allowed, okay? So looking for ones where inverse sign is inside, like this first one. We need to look at this and say, is it in the right interval? What was the interval I have to be between? Between negative 1 and 1, yep. So is that value between negative 1 and 1? All right. Since I'm in the right interval there, I can do the question. The sign and the inverse sign are going to cancel each other out. My answer is just going to be negative 0 0.0316. Okay. Where else do we have an inverse function inside? Question E here. Okay. So let's look at this. This value has to be between negative 1 and 1. Is it? No. So this is game over. I'm done. I can't do this question. There's no adjusting allowed. Can't do it. We say does not exist. We are outside the domain. Okay? Questions about that? All right. Now, the other ones are game on. We can get our answer, but we might have to do some adjusting. So, first one here, question B. Starting on the inside, we are looking at an angle of pi over 4. Okay, picture where that is. Pi over 4 here, quadrant 1. Yes? Is that in a quadrant where inverse sign is defined? Yes, so I don't have to do any adjusting. I've got the angle where I want it. I'm good. The inverse sign will cancel the sign out. I just get a pi over 4. Okay. Question C. Where is 3 pi over 4? Okay, quadrant 2. So that's the angle I'm given to start with. Is arc sine defined in that quadrant? No. So here's where I have to do game on and start doing some adjusting. I need to analyze it and say, okay, first of all, what's my reference angle where I'm at? This is a pi over 4. Okay. Is my sine positive or negative in that quadrant? In quadrant um, 2 here. Sine is positive. So I need to convert this into a quadrant where the sign is still positive, but where inverse or arc sign is defined. So I have to flip this over into quadrants one or two to be defined. Which of those has a sign that's positive? Sorry, one and four. Which one of those would be positive? One. So I need to bump it over here. I need the same exact reference angle. So if I had a reference angle of pi over 4 over here in quadrant 2, I need a reference angle of pi over 4 here. So when these things cancel each other out, the arc sine and the sine, I'm not going to get 3 pi over 4. I'm going to get what? 1 pi over 4. All right, because that's the quadrant that I have to be in. All right, let's try another one. Take a second and find where 13 pi over 10 would be on your unit circle. Think of 13 pi over 10. What quadrant would we be in? Why? Yeah, think of 13 tenths as 1 plus an extra 
three tenths. You guys are loving all these fractions, right? So 13 tenths is the same as one and three tenths. One pi would get me here, and then I have to go an extra three tenths. All right, so my reference angle is three tenths. I'm looking at sines and inverse sines. In the quadrant I landed in, is sine positive or negative? Okay, so I need to bump this to a quadrant where sine is negative, but arc sine is defined. So I need to bump this to quadrant four, okay? I need the same exact reference angle. So if I was down here, three tenths, I have to go here, three tenths. What will my answer be? I heard somebody say it. Negative, yes. I have to be at negative three tenths for this to work out. All right. Questions about the sine and arc sine ones? All right. Example 4.2. Switching to cosines. We are defined where? One and two. Top half. All right. Let's start with the ones where inverse is inside. Those are either I got it or I can't do it. All right, inverse inside, which one do I have? D. All right, so arc cosine, inverse is inside. Is this between negative 1 and 1? Yes? Okay, so I can do this. Game on. What's my answer going to be? Negative 1 half, yep. Okay, all of the other ones are the game on situation where I have to maybe do some adjusting. Okay? So let's start with the first one here. Cosine of 3 pi over 4. Let's draw it. 3 pi over 4 is over here. Is that in a quadrant that I'm allowed to be in for inverse cosine? Yes. So I don't have to do any adjusting. My inverse cosine will cancel my cosine. I just get my 3 pi over 4. All right, and just to make sure you understand why those things are canceling out, what is the cosine of 3 pi over 4? Did I stump you? Negative root 2 over 2? Okay, then it's saying now I want an angle that has a cosine of negative root 2 over 2, which puts me back at 3 pi over 4. Does that make sense? Okay. <coughs> Where is 7 pi over 6? Good. Reference angle is pi over 6. Okay. Is that in a uh, quadrant where arc cosine is defined? No. I need to bump it into which quadrant? Y into 2. Not because it's the closest one. I need a reference angle of pi over 6, but I can draw a reference angle of pi over 6 in any quadrant, right? I have to be in quadrants 1 or 2, but why didn't I use 1? Because cosine needs to be negative. Does it? Why is cosine negative? Because we're in quadrant 3. Cosine's negative here. Yes? So of my two quadrants, I have to bump it into one where cosine is negative, which puts me in quadrant 2. Okay, so if we were to draw a reference angle here that's the same value, pi over 6, how do I get to that position? From here, I have to go to here. What are you saying? Where are you getting 12s? This is pi over 6. 5 pi over 6 would get me there? Yes? Okay. It's okay. We have our moments. All right. Question C. Looks a little different, 
but we're still taking the cosine of an angle. This is an angle. But it's not our typical a fraction of pi kind of angle. What would the decimal equivalent be for root 2 over 2? Grab your calculator, somebody. Root 2 over 2. It is 0.7 something. Root 2 over 2, who's got it? Thank you. So we are taking... We are taking the inverse cosine of the cosine of 0.707. Okay, so we have to think in terms of radians. What quadrant would we be in if we are making an angle of 0 0.707 radians? Well, let's look at it. In this quadrant, or sorry, in our unit circle, this is 0, this is pi over 2. What's the decimal for pi over 2? 3.14 divided by 2. 1.57. Okay, so if I need to only go to 0.7, I'm still in quadrant one, right? So picture an angle here that has a radian measure of 0.707. Okay, now I want the inverse cosine of that. Is it in a quadrant? where it's defined. Yes. So my inverse cosine of the cosine of that angle, those will cancel out. So I get the 0.707. I'm going to leave it back as the root 2 over 2 version. All right. We just converted it to a decimal to kind of picture what quadrant we were going to land in. All right. So answer should be root 2 over 2. All right. Question E. Where do you land at 23 pi over 7? Think about it. Where do we land? 23 sevenths is what mixed number? 3 and 2 sevenths. Okay, so if we're going to go 3 pi, here's 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and we have to go an extra 2 sevenths? So my reference angle is 2 sevenths pi. All right. We're talking about cosines. In that quadrant, will cosine be positive or negative? It is negative. So I have to bump this to an allowed quadrant where cosine's negative. Where am I going to bump it to? Quadrant 2. So I need to be up here in quadrant 2 with the same reference angle of 2 pi over 7. But what's the angle I use to get there? All right. Okay. All right, let's try some tangent ones. Do we have any where the inverse function is inside? All right. So question B. I look at what I'm taking the arctan of. Is it within the range or the domain that I'm allowed? What's my domain for tangent? All of them, right? Negative infinity to infinity. So is this allowed? Yes. That means the tangents will cancel the arctangents, and we just get negative 1,000.22. For the other ones, we have to picture what quadrant we are in and possibly adjust. So 7 pi over 4, where do I land? Here's 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths. Yes? Okay. Reference angle here is pi over 4. All right. Is that in a quadrant where inverse tangent is defined? Yes. So they're going to cancel each other out. I'm just left with, careful, why do I have to rewrite it as negative pi over 4? 
I cannot go from here all the way to here, right? I can't be in quadrants three, uh, two and three. So I have to get to this position by going that way. So my answer is really going to be negative pi over four. Does that make sense? Okay. Go ahead and draw your angle for question C. Be careful, it's a negative one. All right, negative four thirds, where do we land? Here's negative one third, negative two thirds, negative three thirds, negative four thirds. What's my reference angle? Reference angles are never negative. Thank you. Pi over three. Okay. Is it in a quadrant where inverse tangent is defined? No. So I'm going to have to bump it to another quadrant. Is tangent positive or negative where I'm right now? Tangent is negative, right? Cosine's negative, sine's positive, so tangent would be negative. That means I need to bump it into a quadrant where tangent would be negative. All right, so I need to bump it here. I need the same reference angle of pi over 3. To get there, I have to go in a negative direction. So my answer here is going to be negative pi over 3. All right, last one with tangents. Go ahead and draw 19 pi over 15. Think of it as a mixed number. All right, did you land in quadrant three? Yes. Reference angle of 4 fifteenths pi? Perfect. Is tangent positive or negative there? It is positive because sine and cosine are both negative. So tangent is positive there. I need to bump this to a quadrant where tangent is positive. All right, we're going to bump it to quadrant one, still using a 4 pi over 15 reference angle. So my answer is 4 pi over 15. All right. We got one more page. Lots of fun stuff yet to be done. Take a look at what's inside parentheses on these next three. What do you notice? Inside, it says sine inverse or inverse sine of three-fifths, inverse sine of three-fifths, inverse sine of three-fifths, yes? Okay, but what's different here is that we don't have a sine on the outside. In all of the other examples we did today, we had the same kind of inverse function as we had with the regular function. So we paired a sine with an inverse sine, or we paired a cosine with an inverse cosine. Now we're mixing them, okay? Inside it says inverse sine of three-fifths. And in my mind, the question I'm thinking is, I need what? Remember from yesterday? I need an, I need an angle whose sine is three-fifths, okay? That's what this means. Now, is three-fifths one of our known things on our unit circle? No. But we can make a triangle. We can think of opposite adjacent hypotenuse, right? We can create a triangle where we have an angle with a sine of three-fifths. Because the three-fifths is positive, 
I must be in which quadrant? I must be in one. Inverse sine is only defined in one and four. Sine is positive in one. So draw a triangle in quadrant one. We're going to call this theta. We want theta to have a sine of three fifths. How am I going to label my sides? Okay, this is three, this is five. Do you know what the other side is? How do you know it's four? It's a Pythagorean triple. Remember that from geometry? Three, four, five triangles? Six, eight, ten? Okay, so if it hadn't worked out quite that nicely, could we have used the Pythagorean theorem to figure that side out? Yeah. All right, now it's saying I want the cosine of that same angle. So this right here is really just theta, right? I created an angle whose sine was three-fifths, and now I want the cosine of that angle. Well, based on my triangle, what's the cosine of it? All right, so four-fifths would be my answer to that one. The second one has the same starting picture because I'm taking the inverse or arc sine of three-fifths. Now it's saying give me the tangent of that angle. The tangent of that angle. What's the tangent based on my triangles? Three-fourths? Okay. Next one says give me the cosecant of that angle. Well, if sine was three-fifths, cosecant's going to be five-thirds. Yep. Okay. So if it's not one of our unit circle ones that we know, we can create a triangle, find the three sides, and answer it based on that. Are we okay with that one? All right. Back to ones that we do know in our unit circle. We are mixing and matching our trig functions again. So we are going to have to start inside and work our way outside. So our first one, right here, we want an angle whose cosine equals negative root 2 over 2. Where is inverse cosine defined? In quadrants 1 and 2, the top half. Where would it be negative? Okay, so we want an angle over here in quadrant 2 that has a cosine of negative root 2 over 2. Which kind of angle has cosines with root 2 over 2s? The pi over 4s. So we want an angle over here where we have a pi over 4 reference. Okay, so this right here is 3 pi over 4. Okay, now it's saying take the sine of 3 pi over 4. So what is the sine at 3 pi over 4? Yes. So my answer is root 2 over 2. Okay. Second one. Let's draw 5 pi over 3. Where would that be? 5 pi over 3. Quadrant 4? Okay. So we're over here in quadrant 4. What's my reference angle? Pi over 3? Okay. Can we get the ordered pair here? What's my ordered pair here? For pi over 3's. 1 half. Negative root 3 over 2? Okay. So the sine of 5 pi over 3 is negative root, two, root 3 over 2? So now the question is saying, let's take the arc cosine of negative root 3 over 2. So I need an angle whose cosine is negative root 3 over 2. Now think about that for a minute. I need an angle whose cosine is negative. Which quadrant do I need to be in? I need to be in quadrant two, right? Arc cosine is defined on the top, negative in the second quadrant. 
So I need to be over here in quadrant two. What kind of angle has a cosine of root three over two? Pi over six? Hang on. Which angle has a cosine of root three over two? Just in general, reference angle. Think quadrant one, reference angle. What angle has a cosine of root three over two? Pi over, okay, I'm getting two answers, guys. You told me here that pi over three has a sine of root three over two. I'm asking for an angle that has a cosine of root three over two. Pi over six. I need to be in quadrant two with a pi over six reference. We switched, right? We started with a sine, we're ending with a cosine. Different angle. I need to be over here with a reference of pi over six. That angle would have a cosine of negative root three over two. What is that angle? Are we confused? What part's confusing you? Too many different things to do? You gotta take it in pieces. Start on the inside, work your way out. Okay, we'll slow down a little here. First thing here, inside, it says find the cosine of pi. Where is pi on a unit circle? Over here? Yes? What are the coordinates there? Okay. And this is going to be really easy if you know your unit circle and your coordinates, right? If you're struggling with that, it's going to make this harder. What is the cosine of pi? Negative 1. Yes? Okay. So rewrite this. We are now looking for the inverse tangent of negative 1. So I need an angle whose tangent is negative 1. What kind of an angle has tangents where you get either a 1 or a negative 1? The pi over 4 piece, right? Because you have to have the same sine and cosine values. Okay, so think pi over 4s. Tangent, inverse tangent is defined on the right side. Where would it be a negative? Down here, quadrant 4. So draw a pi over 4 reference angle down here. Okay, that's the angle I'm looking for. How do I write it, though? I have to say it as a negative pi over 4 because I can't go all the way around the unit circle to get there, right? I'm only allowed to be on the right side. So my answer here is going to be negative pi over 4. All right, at your tables, I'm going to pause the video here. I want you to find an angle whose sine is negative root 3 over 2. I need an angle whose sine is negative root 3 over 2. Okay, so we're looking for an angle whose sine is negative root 3 over 2. Inverse sine is defined on the right side. Sine would be negative the bottom. So we're quadrant 4 to start with. Yes? Okay. So we need to be down here in quadrant four. What angle has a sine that's root three over two? That's the pi over threes? Okay. So we want to be down here with a reference of pi over three. Yes? What are the coordinates there? One half negative root three over two? Yes? All right. Now it's saying, tell me the cotangent of that angle. Okay? So our angle is actually negative pi over 3 to get there. 
doesn't matter a whole lot because they're asking us for the cotangent and we can find that based on our ordered pair. Cotangent is which variable over which? X over Y, cosine over sine. So we need to take 1 half divided by negative root 3 over 2. The 2's drop out, we get 1 over negative root 3, rationalized. Good. Okay. Question E. What is the sine of 2 pi? So in my mind, I'm picturing 2 pi. All the way to there, right? What are the coordinates there? 1, 0. Okay. So what is the sine of 2 pi? 0. So this whole thing right here is a 0. Now it's saying, tell me the tangent at 0 radians. What is the tangent of 0? 0 divided by 1, which would be 0. Okay. So my answer is just 0. Okay, question F. I need the tangent of pi. So let's find pi. What are the coordinates there? Good. All right. I need the tangent. Tangent would be sine over cosine, y over x. Zero divided by anything is zero. So now it's saying, okay, find the secant of zero. Well, where is zero degrees or zero radians? Back over here on the positive side, right? So now we're looking at this point. We want the secant of zero. Coordinates are one, zero. The secant would be the reciprocal of cosine. The reciprocal of one is one. So my answer is one. Is it starting to get better? Bet you're going to go home and watch this video like five times, right? Okay. We've got a couple more. I think we can get them done. Arc sine of zero. What's the question? What's the statement you're putting in your mind? I need a, I need an angle whose sine is zero. Okay. Need angle whose sine equals zero. Okay. Now, arc sine is only defined where? 1 and 4. So where on the right side of my graph, of my unit circle, is the sine 0? The x-axis. Okay. So right here, I have coordinates 1, 0. Sine would be 0. Okay. So I am at 0 radians. Yes? So now it's saying... Find inverse cosine of zero. Well, that means I need an angle whose cosine now is zero. Where can I be on my unit circle? Top half, one and two. Where in the top half do I have a cosine that's zero? Yes. Okay. All right, question H is a little different. There's a 2 in there. So let's start on the most inside part here, the arc cosine of 1 half. I need an angle whose cosine is a half. An angle whose cosine is 1 half. We're at pi over 3. So now this is saying find the sine of 2 times pi over 3. Does that make sense? Okay, so can we find 2 pi over 3? Okay, what quadrant are we in? In 2, okay, over here. This is 2 pi over 3. Now I need the sine of it, so I need to know the coordinates over here. What are the coordinates over there? Well, 
What is it? Negative one half root three over two. Okay, so I want the sine of that, which would be the root three over two. Okay. Take a look at the last one. Start with the most inside one. It says find the sine of 3 pi over 2. Talk at your tables. What is the sine of 3 pi over 2? Three pi over two. Where is three pi over two? Where's three pi over two, guys? Three pi over two is down here. Okay, coordinates zero, negative one. So the sine of that would be negative one. So this right here is really just a negative 1. So now they're asking me to find the secant of the arctan of negative 1. Okay, so now I'll work in the next parentheses set. We need to find an angle who has a tangent of negative 1. We've done this already today. Where would we have a tangent of negative 1? We're looking at pi over 4 reference angles. Okay, arc tangent is defined on the right side. To get it to be negative, we need to be down here. All right. So, reference angle is a positive pi over 4. This angle is a negative pi over 4. So, now it's saying, tell me the secant of negative pi over 4. Well, I need the coordinates, right? What are the coordinates there? The root 2 over 2s, okay. Are any of them negative? The sine one would be? Okay. So now it says find the secant of that. Secant is which one? Reciprocal of cosine. So I need the reciprocal of this one. So my answer is going to be 2 over root 2. What would that be if we rationalized it? The root twos, so two root two over two, the twos drop out. Just a plain root two for a final answer. How did I get rid of what? We said arctan negative one means an angle whose tangent's negative one. We said that was negative pi over four. Okay, that's the angle I'm looking for. And now I want to take the secant of that angle. So I found the coordinates of the angle. Secant is reciprocal of cosine. All right. So yesterday I gave you guys a worksheet to be working on. You want to keep working on that, okay? But do this first, day two, 23 to 35, 37 to 41, and 43 to 46. The worksheet's not due tomorrow, but if you have a little spare time after doing this, get a few more of those done. I don't know. Um, we are moving your test, guys, to next Thursday instead of Wednesday. Just a heads up on that. All right. 